Thou hast come to see a prisoner and an exile. We desire but the good of the world and happiness of the nations. Baha'u'llah è venuto per trasformare l'intero carattere dell'umanità. Baha'u'llah's purpose is to unite all mankind, to bring all races, classes, peoples, different backgrounds to be united. When I think of my adolescence, it was a violent society, and the way that was expressed was really through a war. When my parents got divorced, I was about eight or nine years old. This union that's been the source of life, really, that breaks. I grew up on the south side of the city. How are we going to address racial prejudice, racial injustice? I was lost, with no purpose. I was a person without any dream, a person without any identity. Every step I took was accompanied by fear. So I asked myself, could we be so lucky? Am I so lucky that God hasn't given up on us and on humanity? The teachings of Baha'u'llah and the Bab have a very special resonance in the context of Northern Ireland. It's a society that has been divided along religious lines from its beginning. The Bab means the gate. He came to open the way to a new revelation. Everyone, all of humanity, has a spiritual connection to the Bab and Baha'u'llah. They came for all people to come together as one family. The unquestionable truth is love. Love is what we share with everyone in our society. Love is the reason we exist. She was a woman who always had too much to say. And that's always very difficult for a woman. You're supposed to be quiet, you're supposed to be modest. She had a knowledge of Islamic jurisprudence, of the Hadith, of the Quran, so that her arguments were foolproof. So if somebody said, no, you're wrong, she could argue back. به قتل فتوا میدن و شاه دستور کشتن تو صادر میکنه. She was even deprived in her death of a proper funeral. Inquiète pas maman, j'ai appris à l'école tout ce qu'on met dans la terre, ça pousse un jour. Tous ces des amitiés, renouer les amitiés, renforcer nos amitiés pour servir ensemble car le servir youth, we are really changeable, and change is normal to us. As a young person, how can I use my energy for something good? We all share the common goal to change the community. And the youth has a lot of kraft, has a lot of new things, new wisdom. I believe that the social forces are two types, both negative and positive. Today we live in a society that is from a strong ich-bezogenheit geprägt ist und auch ähm, früh schon ja, anderen Menschen einen Egoismus vorlebt. Und Comment est-ce qu'on va tous ensemble marcher sur un sens de service?
best man, the best days men in color would tend to do this. Hey, hey, how you doing? That first date was like, hey, how you doing? Full body hug, full, full embracing of who we are that I have never experienced before in my life. People have been to the BMG, you're never gonna forget that experience. And there was this singing that was simultaneously praying, that was simultaneously crying. I found that in no other place. Won't you cause me to taste? My father generally would bring music to the black men's gatherings. So we did a lot of things that my family personally were accustomed to doing at home. The purpose of it, to inspire black men and to uh, let them know that they had a place and a purpose to serve their Lord. That African-American men had needs and had healing and to allow that to happen for 25 years is really remarkable. And we went to all, you know, like 26 countries all over the continent. Going to the other side of the world, you like go to Africa, go to Brazil, brothers went Everywhere. I remember uh, Al Daines went to the, the Antarctica. Americans invited him to sail to their shores aboard the new luxury liner, the Titanic. Abdul Baha chose to board the more modest ship, the SS Cedric. President Theodore Roosevelt knew about him before his visit. He pronounced himself as wonderfully impressed with the teaching of Abdul Baha, the Persian teacher of a universal religion expected in this country. April 16, the Titanic had sunk. Responding, Abdul Baha spoke about the fatalities. When I think of them, I am very sad indeed. But when I consider this a calamity in another aspect, I am consoled by the realization that the worlds of God are infinite, that though they were deprived of this existence, they have other opportunities in the life beyond. Even as Christ has said, in my Father's house are many mansions. He entertained numerous visitors, including the U.S. Treasurer Lee McClung, who later recalled, I felt as if I were in the presence of a great prophet, Isaiah, Elijah. No, that's not it. The presence of Christ. No, I felt as if I were in the presence of my divine Father. Alexander Graham Bell, inventor of the telephone, was captivated by Abdul Baha. Abdul Baha arranged for a banquet for the African Americans. Many white women came forward to cook for and serve the guests. Today I am most happy, for I see here white and black sitting together. There are no whites and blacks before God. Let all associate, therefore, in this great human garden, even as flowers grow and blend together side by side. Count Leo Tolstoy, the Russian novelist and one of the most important philosophers of his time. We spend our lives trying to unlock the mystery of the universe, but there was one man, a prisoner in Akka, who had the key. Already at an early age, Baha'u'llah had a vision that was in conflict with the state and the prevailing religious order. He was arrested and imprisoned in Tehran's worst prison, the Black Pit of Siachal. He was exiled to the empire's most remote and desolate prison in Akka. This was the end of the world, and his imprisonment was meant to silence him forever. He challenged the most powerful leaders of the world, from the Shah of Persia to the Tsar of Russia, Queen Victoria of England, Emperor Franz Joseph of Austria, the Sultan of Turkey, Pope Pius IX, Kaiser Wilhelm of Germany, and Napoleon III of France. Because Baha'u'llah is the manifestation of God, his words have power. Like it had power before with Jesus or Moses or Krishna or Buddha or Muhammad. It's the fulfillment of all the dreams that people are waiting for. The reason that we are Baha'is is not only because we believe that it's a divine truth from Almighty God, but we believe that it's practical. You can do something, solve something. Create something. Friends of Italy, uh, that uh, they think is, uh, Australia is so far away, they don't even know in, in, in geographical map where it is. <laughs> <laughs> come from all walks of life. 140 years ago, Baha'u'llah said, now was the time for the unification of mankind for world peace. He said that we could achieve this, that it was our responsibility to make it happen. A lot of people seem to think our environment is in serious danger. Baha'u'llah, of course, warned us a hundred years ago that if material civilization was carried to excess, it would be a greater source of evil as it had been of goodness if kept within the restraints of moderation. Peter, the attitude of the Baha'i teachings towards material 
material possession. In the Baha'i faith, we see that the material aspects of life goes together with the spiritual. This film was made at a Baha'i Youth Conference. I met the highs. They seemed so close together and unified. Well, they were so different from all the rest of the people that I met. When the people of the world see the blacks and, and whites together, coming together in peace, it sort of like stimulates the whole world into coming together. You know, it's a new day. United States, a typical Baha'i, is one reared in the Christian tradition. Though there are some, like Chester Kahn, whose Navajo ancestors worshipped the spirit of the sacred mountain. In India, the Baha'i concept of community begins to alter relationships that have been frozen in rigid caste lines for more than a thousand years. In Japan, Mr. Sasaki was the only Baha'i in Sapporo. Gradually, others have joined, among them Miss Hara, who first learned of the faith from an American soldier. Baha'u'llah made the oneness of mankind the central principle of his faith, implying an organic change in the structure of society as we know it.